Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Thank you for staying with us here on track one, the sponsors track. We've had such great engagement um, this afternoon. So thank you all for participating and joining us. Very pleased to introduce our next speaker, who is Rolf Hefti, who is head of product management in cyber defense at Terra Active. Terra Active is fine, yeah. I got most of it right, he's saying, so I'm, I'm happy for that. But he is here to answer what I think is a very important question in this age that we're now living in. Could tools for security orchestration, automation, and response really help us? Are they going to help us? Is it all snake oil? I'm not so sure. Save your questions for the end um, and take it away. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Rolf. I'm one of the four partners uh, of Teractive. And uh, we are very strongly investing in SOC organization. And uh, with that, it came uh, the security automation. It was really a hot topic the last years. Because as you all know, it's difficult to find people. We see a lot of experts here, but um, to hire them and keep them is a lot of work. So what you want to do is you want to provide interesting jobs and interesting work. And of course, you want to scale. So what we try is really what you see here. We try to reduce, reduce the workload of uh, the analysts and we want to speed it up. But first, when you introduce that, you talk to the CISO, and he sees SOAR a bit different than an analyst. You know, he sees not only the power, but with the power comes the danger. And of course, typically he sees the risk and not the fun of it. And, uh, but this is in every organization that starts with automation and SOAR. Uh, the difference maybe, you know, when I, when I said I want to talk about SOAR, at this event, they said, oh, fine, yeah, we have supply chain security as a topic. And I said, oh, no, I didn't want to talk about that. I want to talk about the possibilities you have with that, but not the danger. But of course, we heard it this morning. We heard it in many speeches. There is always danger. Uh, why are we as a SOC provider a bit better fitted for that? You know, when you look at our customer base, it's normally their IT organization is really focusing on, you know, getting the, the applications to the to the users, you know, having a good performance uh, and availability, and of course security, but it, it doesn't come first, you know. And with us, oops, with us, uh, sorry, it goes a bit the other way, you know. Sometimes it's really hard to work at the SOC provider as a user because everything is focusing on security not on reachability, availability, usability. And of course, that is also something that keeps us, in the end, secure, maybe a bit more secure as our customers, and that's what they expect. So what we do if we introduce something new like SOAR, we, you know, we think what can we really do better that it doesn't get a problem to us that really helps us. So we try to identify the real um, you know, danger risks that come with it. We look at the vendors very carefully, not only on what they deliver, but how they deliver it. And uh, of course, we, we look at it in details and we also penetrate it because we also have pen testers in our company so we can use them internally. And of course, we have to use them. So we are really knowing what risks we're taking if we introduce something new. And what it also important is to, you know, to monitor it. If you have introduced it in a safe way, that's fine. But you know, not much has to change. Has to change, and then suddenly it's not secure anymore. So you have to monitor it, monitor it constantly, and that's what we do with our uh, SOC management framework. We developed, especially not only for SOAR but for all our tools, we use internally to pro 
produce our service to our customers. It started about 20 years ago when we developed that, and it, you know, it just keeps on, you know, growing and developing with the new tools we are using, with the new danger, with the new attack scenarios that come to the market. And of course, we also, as I said before, try to monitor it as good as possible. So there's no tool we are using that is not using internally, but also at our customer side, that's not really very tight monitored by us. And of course, our business is to detect and respond. So that's what we do. We are, are also, uh, our SOC is also our own customer. So we kind of internally, you know, help them to provide the right services, not only to the customers, but also to ourselves. How do we produce that? And, you know, I come to that actually in the third part of the whole presentation, but important is that when you start SOAR and you want to sell it to the customer base we have in Switzerland, um, it has to ha come to a, to a, with a certain price tag. If it's too expensive, no one will use it because it's just too expensive. And we wanted to introduce a solution that is really working for our customer base and where you can start uh, on a certain level of investment because we think it's very important that you have it in every aspect. Even small customers should start with it because it gives you so many advantages. So the way we have introduced that is uh, with a shared the SaaS solution we produce for our customers. So you have shared cost. You have you can have the, the host or the different components, as you see here, distributed. You can have that at our premises or the other way around at the customer's premises. It depends where he wants to have the customer data. And uh, of course, for us, as you saw before, we try to do, design everything as that way that it, we don't have any customer data, if possible because the customer data should stay with the customer and not with us as a provider. But as I said, there is not only a one view on this, on this. Otherwise, if we only would look at the case, so we, maybe we wouldn't have bought the, the tool and wouldn't have introduced that to our services. Of course, we have the analyst that really wants to get rid of this boring stuff. Then, you know, all this manual work, it's not only fun to be a security analyst. Sometimes it's really uh, so many little things, little task, tasks you have to do. You have to get all the right information to make the right decisions. And here, SOAR can help you a lot, you know. It can, um, but it can also help a lot in working together with other organizations. Normally we build this so-called hybrid SOCs. So we have some, folks at the customer. We have some resources in our SOC, but maybe we have also a third party, a partner or someone that is also kind of working together in this hybrid SOC organization. And there the information flow is very important. You know, if someone just does a change for us, it would be alert. And if we have an alert, it costs. Someone is working on it, someone is producing hours, and someone has to pay for it. So if you have a good kind of information flow, you won't have extra cost that is not necessary. But also, you, you know, we are not a hospital, we are not a bank, we are not uh, uh, insurance. But we work for all these kind of customers. But for us, sometimes it's very difficult, difficult to really understand what's their um, uh, crown jewels, you know, what do we have to uh, really look at and also here SOAR can help to you know get a flow of information which are very important for us as a SOAR provider. And again uh, of course in the end it's all about response, fast response, right response in a good quality and if we this is a, it's a simple uh, presentation or picture here. 
normally people believe, you know, now we have you as a sole provider, you can do everything for us. And then you start, you know, going into the project and seeing that I, we can detect a lot, sure. But then you have to react because we have no access to firewalls, we have no access to clients, we have no access to application. And this is really then a surprise to some that they have to do a lot more than they thought. And here also, SOAR can help us, you know, to can really, we can extend our scope the way the customer really needs it and is a real help for them. Even though we don't need access rights to all the firewalls, for example, but we can give SOAR the access rights to it and we can design a very clear way how we can handle a certain attack, a certain response to an attack. So, typical scenarios we see is, um, or first of all, to really see the scenarios, you need a cyber defense platform. When we started, you know, some years ago with the whole SOC business, the cyber defense platform was really a CM solution. But nowadays, as you see, it's much bigger. You know, we have the different, on the, on the horizontal, we have the attack phases, typically, and the NIST phases on the vertical side. And here you see which kind of tools we, we, we really want to have if we are a SOC partner of a customer. And you see here, especially in response and recover, we really believe in a SOAR solution. And if you don't have that, you have to do it manually. You can do some with EDR or maybe NDR, but we really believe nowadays that you need one to be on the maturity level that is needed in this 2021. What is it really providing to us? Well, we have decided to use this uh, XOR platform for Palo Alto, but there are many others that uh, are similar to that. I think what we found out, they have so many tools there, or so many possibilities, but the really important for us, are, as I numbered it here, is orchestration, and then automation, and the incident response. And collaboration and SLA reporting is not really that important for us, for different reasons. Um, to see the orchestration first, of course, that's what why you buy these kind of tools. You get all the integrations to all the tools, all the different IT uh, components our customers use. You don't have to build it them yourself anymore as, as it used to be. So this is really a big advantage which you uh, want to leverage. But then, of course, we heard uh, also in other talks before the typical attacks like phishing attack or so some, something like that. This is daily business nowadays for our customers. So if you can enhance the way you treat this, and there's a nice picture here, you see how much, how much interaction you have normally if you do it the manual way. And all interactions is, you know, every interaction be between humans can be, a, let's say, a misunderstanding. Maybe the guy I always ask is not there because he has holiday. I ask someone else, he gives me a wrong information or not the whole information I need and so on. So it can break easily. And with SOAR, you can build it much stronger and faster and automated and optimized and then you win a lot in such tasks like, you know, preventing your organization from uh, phishing attacks, which are something that is now, you know, happening daily or weekly. And other really important thing is this automation process between the organizations, because it's not only the different uh, IT organizations, as I said, in the hybrid SOC, it's also internally. You have these different uh, teams which don't speak that much, maybe, with each other, but then suddenly have to react in a one, as, a, as a one team. 
And this is also a nice visualization how it can help, you know, when you have, you know, the partner, which always, uh, you know, maybe it's a bit difficult to understand what you really need because he's not that much into security, then it's this other guy from this other and organi organization and team and so on. You really can design together with the best experts available the right processes to respond to a certain use case, to a certain attack. And then you can reproduce that, even if the expert is not there, even if they're the guy that you no normally have to prevent this kind of attack is in holiday or not available. So this is really something that helps us a lot to have the right quality and the right, sp right speed that is needed. So in the end, when you look at um, our typical uh, detection response phases, we have these guys, the roles of different people we have in our SOC that do this different work. They have tools. And if something happens, it looks a bit like this, you know, and typically what we see when we, this is really from our customer base now, it's not just a, a marketing slide, but we see where we really can uh, get a lot out of it, this solution is in much better incident information quality because we can gather information which you normally don't have automatically and then decide on a much better information base. If a human really is involved here, he has the much better information base than it used to have if, without this automation possibilities. And of course, it speeds up the whole process. And here we are really happy to have a much faster way now than we used to have. And of course, if you have it at one customer base, or for one customer, you would like to have it for the, so for the whole customer base in the end. That's why we had the challenge to make the whole stuff affordable to other organizations, not only the big ones. And how did we do that? So are for everyone. We made different service modules. So you, you don't have to buy the whole suite. You just buy different models modules and then you start with the base just to integrate uh, your ticketing system with ours and stuff like that. You, you start the orchestration to integrate the different solutions you want to orchestrate and so on. And then you can add on depending on your maturity and your resources uh, with additional modules. And then in the end it looks a bit like this. We have a customer A they have uh, an integrated engine that allows them the whole orchestration and then they can add this ticketing integration. Then they can add automation of certain use cases. Then they can add uh, their own users so they can kind of work together on the SOAR platform with us or they can control us if they want uh, up to the case management. You know, when we start with that, we believed, oh, case management, cool. Everyone would enable that. But then we found out in the typical customer um, projects that it's too much work for them because uh, it's another ticketing tool. And also internally, they already have a ticketing tool. And we have also a ticketing tool. So if you have, of course, a dedicated SOC team, then they can use this SOAR capabilities much better. But if you have guys like they, they do, maybe two guys that work as a SOC, hybrid additional team in the, at the customer base together with us. For them, it's too difficult to change from their internal ticketing to this uh, SOAR special case management tool and, and back and forth. And then, of course, all the other guys in the IT department are not part of it. They, again, work with the ordinary ticketing tool. And this kind of process problems or breaks of uh, because not everyone could be uh, integrated in this case management, made it very difficult to use this functionality, even though it would be a nice functionality. So in the end, we ended up in, in integrating different ticketing tools. So what you can take away from today is really, uh, it is not really, it's not only marketing, it's really true that you can save some money and resources for us, uh, we have here a typical uh, 
bigger customers, uh, we could do over 9,000 automations for them in a quarter. So if you have only a minute, let's say, for each task here that uh, SOAR did for you, and you have a working day of uh, 8.4 hours, it's about 19 days in a quarter you can save. That is real. And of course, we didn't, it's not only about saving data, it's about getting the, the boring stuff done by someone else. And it's also about doing more than you could do with the uh, resources you have. And uh, of course, SOAR is working in 724, and uh, our guys still go home at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. And the other thing is automation of processes. As I said, it's much better if you design the process with the best people, with the best know-how, and then give it whole, the whole information to a tool, which can reproduce the same process every time you push the button, or depend, otherwise you depend on the right people to be there at the right time. And then the last would be, you know, be faster and broader, so, so you can really help the customer when it's needed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Um, uh, we've got about, about 10 minutes left to, till our break. So if anyone has any questions, now would be the time to ask them. Um, I thought that was brilliant. I wonder first, when, when you mentioned the customer use cases, um, what sectors do your customers normally fit in? Uh, you mean sectors, uh, markets? Mm -hmm. or all kinds of, from hospitals to banks to, to uh, industrial companies. So a, a variety that are kind of, because um, you mentioned the, the shifting of the tools to, to fit more of their, their need of SOAR. Yeah, I mean, in the end, automation is something you can use for everyone. You know, that's, but in the beginning, we, we thought, you know, it's, it's something we introduce if we have uh, everything else in place. Nowadays, we would say, oh, we would have to have, we would like to have that in the beginning. Because it just is a different way if you know that you have this automation engine here and you can use it. Then you go, you, so you, you start uh, solving problems differently and better. So it's sort of similar to, I mean, that, that was actually another question that I had of what, what needs to be in place in terms of a security culture at an organization. But you're saying it, it now you're viewing it as it's almost better that there's almost nothing in place so that the tool can be used from the from the ground up almost. I, I, it really depends on the uh, yeah the maturity of the customer, you know. But normally when we start with the customer and, he, in, and he's blind because he has no clue what's really going on in his company, then you start building of course, of course the detection engine and everything like a CM, like an EDR solution and so on. But then, uh, after you see that something is happening, of course, the next thing is you have to react on it. Before, you didn't see it, so you didn't have to react. But then suddenly you see it every day, every hour. And then you should react, and then it doesn't make sense to react manually. If you have organized your whole detection very well, if you tune it, if it's automated, it will give you a lot of information which you have to check if it's real, it's a real act, uh, incident, if it's a real attack or not, and this really helps to have a SOAR engine in place to speed up then all this needed information to make qualified, uh, you know, give a qualified answer if this is a real attack or not. Because this is something also people which are not really used to the SOC business are surprised how diffi difficult it is to find out if it's a real attack or not. And this is a lot about information exchange, communication, and if you have an automation platform underneath, which you can use to speed that up, to make, to enhance the quality, it helps you a lot. Thank you. I think we have another question up here. Um, man in the black. 
Uh, did you develop the automation engine yourself? No, it's, uh, as I said, it's, it's Palo Alto XOR. It's a solution, but it's really a platform. It's not a solution. So yes, you develop it yourself. It's, when we started some four years ago or so, we thought, okay, within a half a year, we're ready. It's not. I mean, of course, we, we had, we, it's, it's, we have mandates, so we have one solution, as I said, as a SaaS solution. We have one solution for many customers to get price tag that you, in the end, going to buy it. But this is a bit more complexity as if you have only one. But uh, then, in the end, we found some uh, tricky stuff which you had to so find a solution first. But now, I think we have a base that we just can roll out. Uh, but of course, it, it could do much more than we do normally with the standard customers, but it's the beginning. And what we really want to reach is that we have it for everyone from the beginning, just to keep up in a higher quality in the end. Or from, from the first you know, month you work together, you, if you have that, it just helps you. We have a couple of minutes left. Any other questions? Ooh. Well, then maybe we should give uh, one last round of applause to Rolf. Thank you very much for the You're presentation. Welcome.